Hello again. It's good to know that with all the worries about the enormous disruption to the education of our children and young people, which has taken place as a result of this COVID-19 business, that a major publisher of school textbooks is focused on what really matters. That is to say, sucking up to the Black Lives Movement and avoiding upsetting very delicate and sensitive little students. Most of us would have found it literally inconceivable that racism could be uncovered in technical descriptions of how our car's brakes work, but we would have been quite wrong. What about the system where one accurate clock is used to control a number of other clocks and ensure that they all keep scrupulously to the same time? Can't see the racism there either? You obviously need some unconscious racial bias training. Luckily, the publishing house Pearson, who pretty well have the marketed GCSE textbooks, as well as vocational courses at further education colleges tied up, they're on the ball. They say that Pearson has remediated instances of biased terminology and imagery in courseware based on student feedback. Hmm. I can see I'm going to have to translate that into plain English. What it means is that a handful of easily offended crybabies have been bleating to Pearson and saying how upset they are at what they see as racism in the textbooks produced by Pearson. One specific problem is that in engineering and computer science, one has master and slave systems. In a car, one large hydraulic cylinder will control a number of smaller um, hydraulic cylinders connected to the brakes. It's known as master and slave. The big cylinder is the master and the smaller cylinders are known as uh, brakes, as slaves. It seems that just seeing the very words master and slave are triggering an emotional breakdown in some students and all the textbooks will have to be reprinted in consequence. This is also associated with the Black Lives Matter movement of course. The head of Pearson's Global Schools Division says that 2020 was a year of enormous change and action when it comes to race and ethnic equality. Well, I suppose that's one way of describing the rioting. We can look forward to some more distortion of history from Pearson, which we've been looking at lately on this channel, because writers of textbooks, including those for history, have been told that people who are depicted as being in power, positions of power, influence or authority should now be from a range of nationalities and ethnicities, rather than being overly UK, US centric. This will make a history of the Second World War interesting to read, to say nothing of the Industrial Revolution and so on. I look forward to seeing these new books. In addition to all this, Pearson's staff are being given mandatory unconscious bias training on a rolling basis. <coughs> the bottom line, of course, is that all new apprentices will be emerging from further education colleges after a City and Guilds course in vehicle maintenance and immediately entering garages or workshops where everybody talks about master and slave systems. It does a bit of thinking about. <coughs> I'll keep an eye out for the new books on the First World War and so on, which portray ethnic minorities in positions of power, influence and authority. This is a really interesting idea, but I have to say it's not actually history.